This is the laboratory of Dr. Charles Schur. Dr. Schur is a research scientist here at St. Jude Children's Research Hospital, and this is part of his work. Unimposing as they are, these letters stand for Colony Stimulating Factor, and they may be a key to genetic alterations which lead to cancerous multiplication of cells. One clue in a long chain that might someday lead to a way to prevent cancer. Looking at colony stimulating factors could represent a major milestone, but like most medical research, Dr. Schur's work is but one small step in a journey of many, many miles. During the next few minutes, I'd like to introduce you to a unique group of dedicated men and women. People who, like Dr. Schur, are part of a growing number of distinguished research scientists and clinicians that have come to St. Jude Hospital to join the battle against diseases which take the lives of children. People of science driven by one single hope for tomorrow's children to ensure that they shall live. At the front entrance to this special place in Memphis, Tennessee, is a statue of St. Jude Thaddeus, patron saint of the hopeless. And the entire mission of St. Jude Hospital is to give genuine hope to sick children, not only the thousands and thousands of children treated here, but to all the children of the world. When I started in this field in the mid-1960s, uh, childhood leukemia was considered incurable. Uh, in fact, it was thought that maybe treatment shouldn't even be tried at all, that children should simply be sent home to die. However, the attitude here at St. Jude was that we should treat these children because there was a small possibility that they might be cured by putting together new forms of treatment. In fact, this proved to be the case. Childhood leukemia is a curable disease where modern treatment is applied. From the days when acute leukemia, the most common childhood cancer, was almost invariably fatal, people have come to St. Jude Hospital from all over the world, hoping for miracles. Slowly, over the years, the miracles seemed to increase. New treatments developed here made it possible for an ever-increasing number of children to survive their leukemia. Finally, some are being called cured. Many forms of cancer continue to defy all efforts concentrated on them. Even where progress has been most impressive, too many children still die. The main reason that our entire staff is here is to do research in catastrophic illnesses in children. Cancer is our major interest, but of course we have infectious disease as a major concern of ours and anything that is catastrophic in children the world over is fair game for us to have a research interest in. I think most of us in cancer research or clinical cancer research truly do not believe there is going to be a sudden breakthrough, sudden magic bullet. It's going to take a lot of hard work in the laboratory, learning everything we can at a very basic cellular level for us to learn why we succeed and why we fail with the patients. Um, I think there are several reasons why the survival in Ewing's has improved. We combine the chemotherapy agents uh, in a schedule based on studies that we had actually done in neuroblastoma in the laboratory. Uh, showing that we could get better results if we gave the best two drugs, cyclophosphamide and adriamycin, in a certain schedule. We then transferred that to the Ewing sarcoma picture, and it's resulted in more than 90% of the children going into remission with these two chemotherapeutic agents alone. 
And this has been uh, the most successful program we've had with Ewing sarcoma and certainly one of the most successful in the country. Respiratory infections are the leading cause of morbidity and death in children under the age of five years. Approximately five million children worldwide die as a result of respiratory infections. Vaccines have been tried and they have failed. And now we are taking a fresh look using some of the modern technology that has come around in the last five years to try to identify the important proteins that are involved in infection and then how can we use these proteins to make vaccines that will protect children. In my case, I am particularly interested in working with children with acute lymphocytic leukemia. Through the 17 years that I have been working here at St. Jude, I have seen uh, a change in terms of the proportion of patients that can reach the point where we can stop the therapy and then uh, remain in remission without requiring additional chemotherapy. That is also very uh, rewarding. Nicely, it looks great. And uh, so we have to go on with our plan, all right? Okay. Finally, I would like to stress the fact that the research that is conducted here is always exported elsewhere. And is not only used in our own St. Jude patients, but it also, we hope, will benefit children in the rest uh, of the United States as well as uh, in the rest of the world. In all the areas of our research, I think the ultimate goal is to prevent disease. That's, that's better than anything. Next best is to find a cure for disease. Next best is to improve the outcome of disease. But overall, better than any other outcome is finding a means to prevent the disease. That's, I think, what motivates all of us, and that's what our big hope is is to prevent disease. There are two types of time at St. Jude. One involves daily interaction between clinicians and basic scientists using the best known procedures to arrest cancerous cells which can rob a child of life. But another kind of time is measured in solitary months and years of research. To push further toward wiping out all catastrophic childhood diseases. I think uh, passing the sick child in the hall here at St. Jude, seeing the sick child in the hospital, uh, in a way, as a motivation to us. It continually pushes us, I think, to try to find a solution to their problem. Uh, this is one of the unique features of St. Jude, in that even basic scientists coming to work through the halls in the morning past these children. That's a continuing stimulus to all of us, that this is what it's all about. These are sick children, and any way we can improve the health and welfare of these children. That's our responsibility. What does St. Jude Hospital mean to its patients? One of these people has a special answer. Dr. Alan Portner, a 20-year veteran of the hospital, gained an enriched view when his own 18-year-old daughter came here for treatment of cancer. Well, about 10 months ago, uh, while my daughter was away as a freshman in college, she was having a lot of problems, uh, back pain, that uh, nobody could figure out what she had. And eventually we brought her back home several times. And finally, uh, it was discovered that she had cancer. She had a disease called Ewing sarcoma, which is a malignant tumor of teenagers. And she was brought to this hospital for treatment. And uh, it was... It was, of course, a great shock to us. It was like your world had just ended. And uh, when we first got involved in here, my wife, myself, I'm sure my daughter, she's never said it. We would just, we just thought that this was the end, that there was no, this was the end for our lives. 
and that it was going to be the end for my daughter. But now we have great hope. She's been treated now for six, seven months. Her tumor is gone. They don't see it. The treatment continues to make sure that there's nothing left. And we've gone from despair to having great hope that she's going to survive and live a normal life. She still suffers. She still has great pain. We sit there and watch her get these drugs and stay up with her all night while she's terribly ill. And we see her go on. And I sit and I wonder, where do these kids get that kind of courage to be able to just go on? And I've taken on now a whole new feeling, first of all, about these children that I see. Because now I know what their suffering is. These kids are heroes. I don't know how they stand what they go through. I don't know how they're able to tolerate the pain. But the great hope is, is that for many of them, they're going to live. They're going to make it. I've taken on a new relationship with this institution in understanding what my friends and what my colleagues are doing and how they feel about these kids that they work with and how the nurses and the doctors love these kids. I think sometimes suffer with these kids to pull them through, to try to make them survive their disease. To me, these people are not only dedicated, but they're there on the front line and they're heroes to me because they're saving my baby, my 18-year-old baby. Um, when I first started here, I was talking with one of the senior nurses here who was just marvelous. And I said, now Betty, um, when did you stop crying? And she was very patient with me and she took me aside and she said, I've been here 22 years and you never stop crying. And I remember the first six months I was here, I thought, I'll never survive this. Um, this is probably not my place, and I really need to think about where is my place, because I'm not going to be a contributor here. I cry too much. Well, I made it beyond the six months and realized that actually I was really very happy here. I hadn't stopped crying, but I was really happy. And I realized it was because there's so much caring here. And I thought, where else in this entire universe will I ever find so much love? In the midst of all the sadness, there's this incredible amount of love. And this is the first place I've ever been where you share that love, not only with the patient and the parent and your fellow nurse, you share it with everyone else who works here. And I think it's that peace that carries us all, just that extra love. Clearly, this is a very special place. Ladies and gentlemen, the founder of St. Jude Children's Research Hospital. I'm Danny Thomas, and within these physical walls, we truly have a hospital without walls. The knowledge developed here benefits children all over the world. Wherever the cancers that strike at children and bring pain and sorrow, there too the work of this institution brings hope. St. Jude Children's Research Hospital was born and exists on a simple premise the good Lord gave to me many years ago. And that premise says that a single child should die before his or her time is to me simply unacceptable. And you, my friends, through your support have agreed, and together we have come far. But we must continue to battle as long as these terrible diseases exist. These children are the children of us all. And with your help, we will someday eliminate the horrible threat of cancer from their lives. Together, we can fulfill the hope that they shall live. Thank you.